Um, I was asked and, and somewhat surprised uh, to be the moderator this evening uh, because um, my surprise was that, that uh, Zaha and Peter are the most Im immoderate people I know. And so to moderate them is, is, I mean, Zaha is the only Zaha in captivity and Peter is the only Z uh, Peter in captivity. Um, and they're, they're both masters of disruption. So I, I, I consider myself on a suicide mission here. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, they're, they're, so you're looking at two volcanoes on the stage. Um, they have a lot of similarities. Uh, not that they're interchangeable, but they, there's a big overlap. They're both progressive. Uh, they're both activists in their, in their domains. They're interested in contemporary culture. And they're both artists. Uh, Zaha is, the, in, um, is, is folded art, painting into architecture very famously. Peter, in his way, is a conceptual artist and a curatorial artist who used the mu museum as his medium. Uh, both of them have um, pressed their fields as far as they could go. Um, and uh, on, the, on the way to the school for the reviews, I, I passed a number of, um, walked past a number of equestrian statues, um, which were built in a time when people thought that great men determined history. And um, I have to say that, that um, in this context, uh, Peter and Zaha are great, uh, the great man, the great uh, the woman, uh, that I don't sense that what they did was because of, uh, of a groundswell, a historical groundswell, I sense, sense that they were strong figures who as individuals made a huge difference um, at their own initiative. In, uh, I understand that this uh, uh, series of talks is uh, predicated on the re rapport, the relationship between art and architecture. And um, uh, in terms of Zaha's work, um, she has made art public through architecture. Peter has made uh, the museum public through architecture. Um, uh, Zaha's uh, work is, 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 I'm sure, very well known to everybody here, but uh, let me recap a little bit of my impressions of Peter's uh, use of architecture um, uh, um, uh, bringing the museum into the public. He cultivated architecture of a, of a very disruptive sort early, collecting co-op Himbalala Zaha, of course, Frank Gehry, Levius Woods in the uh, collections that are on view in, at the MAC. Uh, he used the courtyard of the MAC uh, for a number of very riveting uh, installations, including one by Zaha, which we'll talk about later. Uh, Vito Conchi, I saw, was quite brilliant. He sort of discovered the, the elephant in the room in, in, in Vienna, the bunker um, that was uh, built during the war, and, and opened it up as a, as a museum. Um, uh, and it reminded me a great deal of Hans Holein's very famous battleship, which he uh, sort of superimposed into the, in the fields um, of, of uh, uh, Austria, uh, this huge out of place, um, uh, instrument of war, um, and so he discovered it, even though it was in plain sight, he's the only one who was able to, to reconceive it uh, for an art artistic agenda. Um, uh, I talked about the art installations, uh, and then, and then he, he discovered Vienna in Los Angeles through the Schindler House and had, uh, established a very active program. So uh, we have to be um, very grateful to uh, Peter for his many accomplishments over the long time he was the, uh, the head of the MAC. Um, but I'm gonna ask each of them to uh, talk about what they admire in the other in terms of their accomplishments. Uh, Peter about Zaha and uh, Zaha about Peter. So uh, Peter, why don't you start? Yeah, uh, I mean, there's already... Uh, take the microphone, I think. Okay. Uh, you said already uh, most things which which are important, and thank you for the thank you for the flowers. I, I just uh, would like uh, to point out uh, um, I'm honored and very happy, uh, very happy. But I realized today morning during my trip from the Art Basel to the Angewandte that this meeting tonight uh, has a set dimension as well, and uh, I think I, I remember quite well, and i uh, try to make a, a long story short. Uh, when Saha arrived at the uh, Angewandte in Vienna, this is like 15 years ago, it's 2000, you said uh, 2001, but uh, I didn't look at the internet, so I just, uh, was, uh, so whatever, Saha should know. But it's, it's a long time, 15 years. And this was also a, a challenge. It was a challenge for me personally, and then encouragement and intensify the radical momentum 
of a programmatic position of the museum. And I think you can, any institution, you can't, you can't uh, do it alone. You need, uh, you always need a scale, you need a relation, and, and you need people. You need artists and architects, uh, and they give, you, they give you power in the end, uh, if they, they really uh, work independently. The, uh, the point of this lecture series, if I understood correctly, is to have a conversation between art and architecture. In other words, Saha, uh, you really could just hold a monologue here as a dialogue with yourself. Uh, art and architecture, from my understanding, there are two disciplines that admittedly are not identical. But even so, you're an architect who succeeds in touching art again uh, and again, often keeping the boundaries between the two fields liquid, even if at the end of the day this is hardly possible. In art, after all, it's about diving into things where the outcome is not preordained and or cannot be predicted with any clarity. Experimentation. Experimentation without experiments, without conquering new territory and unfamiliar situation, culture falls ill and art dies. Uh, and I just want to raise the question, is that the point which we have now arrived? <coughs> the, uh, the general situation between uh, that I, I think that we become more conservative and conservative, that the experiment, uh, I mean, this is, there is no art possible without an experimentation, without the experiment. And I believe that you, Saha, she always was a, a pioneer, a pioneer in when, when she started and still she's going on. How, how do you think she changed things? She changed things? Yes, how? No, I, I think she has a she has a very clear, uh, but she should tell. We, we don't uh, we are not in the dialogue. I'm, I'm sorry. No, uh, we, maybe we should give the the question to Sa. But I, from my understanding, and I want to make not stupid interpretations, but uh, Saha is somebody who is always is, uh, this curiosity for looking. Otherwise, she never could do what she have done uh, for looking for new situations, for new things. But I, I don't want to mm -hmm. to go in this. Well, well I, I, just, uh, I just raised the question. I, I'm interested in your relationship, but Zaha, what do you think Peter's contributions have been? I can't say. <laughs> she can't say, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll come out then in the furthest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, even. Is it working? Yes. It's very difficult to ask me what I contribute to architecture. No, what, what, it's not what do you think he is? Say. No, what, what do you think uh, Peter's contribution is to? Oh, Peter's, of course I can say. Um, no, this, well, is, I, this I, was not the question, no? no. It was. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that, um, you know, I met uh, Peter, must be 25, 30 years ago. Yeah, uh, I, I was looking, we, we met a. Uh, uh, no, I met you, I think the first time I met you maybe was. Before that, but at the opening of the Frank Gehry building in Basel. You may not remember, but I have a very good yeah. memory, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and later you invited me in the uh, late 80s, the very early 90s, to give a lecture at the MAC. Yeah. Uh, when you were locked out. Yeah, it was, there. It was when the pyramid was there. Yeah, yeah when the pyramid yeah. was there. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's actually. It, it brings us back to a project where which he saw this afternoon about a courtyard with a, with a, with a landscape, but this was a, a pyramid, and it was a very interesting project. So I was coming to give a lecture, it was very crowded, and Peter went out to make sure I can get in because there were these you know, very strange um, um, uh, porters or... Uh, yeah, uh, security, yeah, guards, security, security guards, guards yeah. which are still strange. To but this day. country is uh, full of security guards. Uh, and, and he went out to make sure they let me in uh. because they, they were always stopping everybody. But the irony was that I was in, he wasn't allowed in. 
<laughs> so I had, was supposed to give a lecture. He was supposed to introduce me, but he was uh, lost outside running around the building. Uh, so that was uh, my very early memory. Uh, but also what I found really astonishing at the Mac was the way, and I, uh, the way the art was, um, uh, or the objects, let's say, were exhibited. And uh, that was a very interesting correlation between the artists who set up, who set up these objects and curated the shows. And I think that was a very, at the time, a very refreshing and a very new idea. And of course, I've also been to your house in the country uh, where you had art pieces invading the landscape or installations. Uh, and I was always, um, I always put on all the shows uh, you've done at the Mac from the, the thing which turned around in the main space, the Chris Burden, whatever. Yeah. The, the, okay. yeah. So there were all these impossible installations which were set up as, an, uh, as a contemporary art pieces within the context of applied art museum. And I think these things were very interesting when these things overlapped or coincided. Uh, and I remember in 95, uh, I remember the year very well, we did a, we did a competition for uh, the v &A. and uh, I remember telling them that they should really consider uh, installing the piece at the V&A because they had one and a half million pieces. They couldn't show it all. I said, you should look at the Mac. And they said, no, 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 no. In England, we don't do things like that. <laughs> and so 20 years later, they're trying to do things like that. So I think that that was my early, uh, you know, uh, really knowing of, of Peter uh, Nova. And then, of course, over the years, I always received many catalogs and many books and many events, and I did a show at the Mac. Uh, but I think it was this, uh, the idea of bringing, uh, seeing things which don't necessarily always connect within the context of that institution. And I find that, uh, you know, I think very, uh, really very refreshing uh, and amazing. Because all these, I think these uh, exhibits uh, are like any kind of journey you take to go somewhere new, uh, you discover something through that, through that trip of going to a show, going to an installation, and, and uh, so that was. Well, one of the installations was yours in, in, I think it was 1999, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the ice uh, storm. Uh, no, it wasn't in 1999. No, it was 2003. 2003, 2003. Yeah. okay. 1999 okay. was another thing. Um, yeah. But anyway, the, the ice storm was this incredible installation, which was kind of a manifesto. It's the first manifesto of the coming digital revolution in, in um, the sense that the, the, the things that we'd always seen on screens, uh, these very uh, curvilinear, very fluid forms, uh, was installed in a quite beautiful and rather large installation in the courtyard. And I, I think it was uh, fairly historic. Uh, and um, well, I wanted to know, uh, Peter, what did you ask Zaha to do, and, and Zaha, what did you intend to do uh, uh, in that installation? This is just one of a number of installations that happened in the courtyard that was in advance of its time. It declared something new. It was very daring. Um, and again, a, a use of that space uh, that was uh, uh, really quite, quite, quite important. Um, well, um, when Peter installed these galleries, he also co had a contemporary architecture gallery. And he asked me... Permanent to, collection. Yeah, yeah, permanent collection. Yeah. And he asked me to, um, to contribute two pieces, which is a model of Vitra and a painting. And we started talking about having a show, and I thought we should have an archival show. The idea was to kind of make an, to display the archive. So all the line drawings are shown in one go, all the models separately, all the paintings. Uh, it's like displaying an archive because it was, the space was not that large. And the idea was you, you build uh, one piece to uh, not relate to the, to relate to the current archive, the current kind of thinking. And that piece at the Mac was actually made of two pieces. One which was that show we did, Patrick did at, uh, what is it called? Late, as it called by Wolf Briggs, calling it Latex Eurotopia. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, people like Hanny and Greg, and all these people who were in the show. So the piece from the show at the, in Graz, 
was imported to the Mac and attached itself to the landscape which was done for that show. So there were two, so there were inst two installations in one. And the idea that that show over, over time would add more pieces to it. Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, uh, once you make an exhibition and you take this serious with an artist, with an architect, uh, there is no other way to really to understand, to try to understand a little bit of the artist. This is the, the opposite of a curator show, uh, from my understanding. So, uh, what, and uh, Saha, she's of course, she started with a point to make the show, and I think the, the very, and, and she changed, of course, uh, in, in the show and uh, in, in the preparation of the show. But I think the, the most, uh, one of the significant or important things was that you build, beside all the other things, you build an environment. No? And people, uh, this, was, this was the end of the theory, uh, not only the theory, because people could, this complication of understanding her ideas, her environment, they could use it, they uh, could touch it, they could sit in it, so I, I, I think this was a this was a, a very strong move movement. But as far as I remember, it was not uh, it was not the idea from the very beginning. So it developed, and I think this is uh, everything you're doing with with like exhibition. And so I don't believe in any exhibition who can travel from A to B, from there to there. Uh, this is absolutely nonsense. You can do this, but this is a commercial case. Has nothing to do with content. Has nothing to do with art. And, and this is like this was developed on site. And of course, was Patrick was there, and, and you, and there was memory, and then, then something comes together. And I, I, I was, uh, and, and it was not it was absolute not even easy because then. Have administration, uh, they have to control, and people like to control. The only thing what people really like is to control in this country, and uh, so this is this kind of moves are uh, not so easy. But I think this uh, you have to try uh, when you make an exhibition that something happens which didn't happen before. Otherwise, just if you just collect artworks and show it, uh, it happens all the time, but it doesn't interest me so much. Well, in terms of conv convincing the authorities and the, the people who can say no to you, uh, did you have to convince them that, that this was... Oh, gosh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to go to another party, I'm afraid. Oh, no? it's, that's my alarm. It's not a telephone. It's, it, it, I'm going to be snoozing for seven minutes until I... It, 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 I'll cancel it, I hope. He's about to have a sleep. Right, that's right. <laughs> so, so how did you convince the, the, uh, the powers that this was um, fitting for a, a museum of applied arts? Did you, did you say this is really art, or did you, the, uh, was it self-explanatory? Uh, you mean the architecture? Or the, what? Yeah, the, the installation and the... No, I, I mean, for, uh, this is a very... Uh, first of all, it's a very tricky uh, question. And it's not possible to answer in, in, in some sentence. What I tried to, to say in the beginning, that Saha is one of the very few architects who always is, uh, she's able to touch art. I think art and architecture has nothing in common because architecture have to, to fulfill a service and art is in a, has a completely different point of departure. But then, of course, you, you also speak about uh, uh, about the artist uh, and, and an architect, but I, I think this is there are moments in uh, for my it's my personal interpretation that there are moments that you really as an architect where you have a client where you have to fulfill a service and all these things is absolutely opposite what the, what the, what the artist uh, uh, has to do. So, but then even this, I, I think this has to do with experiment. And also with a with a with a with a haltung. With haltung in, 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 yeah, with a, with a strong attitude. Because if you lose this, and most of the architects are losing this or have lost it, so then nothing happens. Not much happens because they just fulfill the wishes of the of the director of the museum or of the client to build something. This is, uh, and I think it's very scale is always important. And to have like art is in a very bad condition now. Art is in, in danger, I would say, because art is very linked to the art market. And uh, if art is not radical, 
uh, it doesn't make sense. And also this institution, they don't, this is not a platform for art. I mean, they kill. They are art killers, the institution. So this is, this is the ambivalence of, of the situation we are living in. And uh, therefore, for architects, it's even more complicated. I, 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 my understanding, my personal understanding, because you have no orientation, not so much orientation. Because if you look at the art the last 20 years, there is, uh, I don't find much resistance, no? And all about art is, has something to do, not only, but resistance is a very, uh, very strong part of the art, from my understanding. Well, it seems that the, the Mac was a little bit a wolf in sheep, sheep's clothes because you have this classicized building on the, on the ring and, and um, uh, you go in and it's into basically a comfort zone. But you really radicalized this institution uh, because almost everything you showed during the times I've been there has been quite radical per the time it was, uh, including the ice storm. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about me because it was not the idea. You can no, just say yes. You can just say yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But I, I think there is all other things a uh, waste of time. Uh, you have to be radical when you wake up in the morning still, and all other things. To starting with a compromise, it goes nowhere. It goes absolutely nowhere. You waste only time and money. Yeah, I, I remember coming here when, when uh, it, I guess it must have been 1990, when the first art was coming out of Russia. And, and you what had was coming a, out of Russia? Uh, the first art, the constructive art. It was yeah. one of the first shows. Yeah. And you had all this stuff arrayed on the floors. I had never seen this stuff. It was just, just there within, within reach. And then you did this show, as, as the gentleman said earlier, about um, North Korean art. Well, that was radical. But Saha did the show in the Guggenheim, not the, 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 Russia, uh, right, the right. Grand Utopia. Yeah, when was that? Uh, 92, uh, I think. Yeah. So this was like, uh, we didn't know each other already, but this was a very remarkable show. Uh, because this was also this combination between curatorial and to put the... Because I think it's always a problem to design a show. If you have a curator and then a designer, it usually doesn't, doesn't mm -hmm. go... Yeah, a beautiful too much. But this was, I think, because Saha was so much interested in, in, the, in, in, in the movement, in the movement of the constructivists. So she tried to, this was my understanding, and I, I think therefore it came something out completely yeah, it, that was surprising. was an amazing encounter between Zaha, Malievich, uh, Lizitsky, and, and uh, Frank Lloyd Wright. So it was, it was a compounded show, kind of an uh, architect on architect on architect. Zaha, getting back to the... Um, uh, the uh, ice storm. Um, I showed the picture of that to an architect in my building in New York, and he said, um, th that, that's not architecture, that's, that's art. And I said, uh, and it was, um, it, it was, the meaning was sort of double, because on the one hand, he was uh, dismissive, dismissive of it, because it wasn't in his view architecture, but um, then on the other hand, it's quite appreciative, because it, it was art. Um, now, we all know that Painting has influenced your work in a huge amount, but for the people who are not so familiar with that whole interdisciplinary um, gamut that you made very early, can you recap that a little bit? I, I, I know you've probably talked about this a thousand times, but some of us might not know it in, in detail or even in uh, grosso modo. Well, I mean, I think that um, uh, my, um, I was in a way always interested in abstraction, but in my, in my fourth year, when they gave us a project on Malevich, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of discovered that whole movement on, on suprematism uh, in a way almost indirectly to start with. And then uh, I had to understand more about the Russian work to translate that project. Mm -hmm. Because actually the original project was uh, exquisite corpse so that each student will take one fragment. So there's another issue which is fragmentation. And, and then you put it together. But I did the Malevich tectonic, the horizontal one, by myself, with one more student. Mm. And uh, I remember Rems telling me, you should fire her and just do it on your own. Uh, and uh, so that was, so uh, the vertical, the, the skyscraper, which was the original um, kind of, uh, in the genesis of the project came from a postcard by Malevich on New York skyline implying that this tectonic could become an architecture. Okay, so that was axiometric, uh, huh? the, the axonometric image flying across the skyline? 
Mm, it wasn't flying. Yeah, it wasn't. It was very oh, static. no, I'm, I'm confusing Lizitsky and, and uh, Malevich. The, the very right. static image of, uh, right, right. of Malevich. So, so the horizontal skyscraper, so that the idea was that when you uh, superimpose it on a, on a, on a, and in terms of urbanism, on a site or give it scale, that it, it immediately becomes not, not an object of, uh, not an art piece, but an architecture. But, so then, uh, you know, I, I had no idea how to deal with the interiority of that place, so I began to look at Lisitsky and Malevich and how we can interpret some of the supremacist uh, drawings and paintings into a planetary exploration, how it could organize a plan. Mm. And from that came the fragmentation of all the cores, the cores of the building, and how you can, then you develop a kind of a really language of the interior. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, so I had to look at kind of many uh, books on the Russian, and there was not at the time, there were some books on the Russian artist, mm. but there were not much on, uh, on Russian constructivism as an architecture. There was maybe one book by Anton Kopp, Town of Revolution and a few others at the time. It was in, and there was, of course, the Stedlik uh, catalog on Malevich, which was, uh, just, had just been published when the show was still on. So there was not a kind of a lot of uh, stuff to know. The AA library had some of the limited edition, some old books in their domain mm -hmm. on Nesitsky and things like that. So that was the original really interest in how one connected architecture and art together. Uh, the embedded in the supremacist work is a very special um, interpretation of a space. It's, uh, in particular, Zizitsky was interested in developing the, the oh, square. Le, no, Lizitsky okay. was interested in developing the square root of minus one, or a, a, a kind of an irrational spatiality. And was that part of your your discovery when you when you went into the suprematists? The because the irrationality of the space, the fact that you know the um, uh, the space was impossible because they had multiple suns and and uh, multiple axiometrics. Well, yeah, I think I think uh, what was interesting about the Russians was uh, not necessarily only the art, but also, these projects were done by Melnikov and Leonidov, uh, which was uh, uh, about writing the program, mm -hmm. about the uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, the, to the social condenser. Mm -hmm. I think that was a very that was the marriage of the abstraction to these new ideas of interpretation of the program, mm -hmm. which kind of worked together. Mm -hmm. I don't think it would have worked if only you had done an abstract plan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an, an, a reductive kind of way of organizing plan. Uh, it was more to do with, with, with spatial organization. It led to social organization. But these plans by Leonidov and Menikov of the social condenser, especially Leonidov, were really, uh, were amazing, you know, and, and mm -hmm. almost precedent in many of them to the New York skyscraper, which is, was is in Rem's book on the Lyrics New York. I mean, it's well, did, did that lead to your interest in public space? So, so many people misinterpret your buildings. Well, as I, 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 I mean, it wasn't just one program. I think that one one project. I mean, I think it was all. There's always interpreting the project and trying to understand the drawing of the city and how the city ultimately became kind of sucked into the building. Uh, you know, um, so this idea of the. Uh, civic or public domain might have started then, but that became really part of the thesis. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we've established that, that art and painting have been important in, in, uh, as an influence in your work. How do you segue from art to the digital world via architecture? Because is, is it is a, a digital program still artistic and potentially, or is it not, or is it is it? Uh, it seems there's a bifurcation possible possible. Mm, I don't think so. You don't think there's a bifurcation that's happening, or, or is, is, it a, is it a smooth, No, I mean, I think, that, uh, I think that uh, from uh, abstraction led to fluidity uh -huh. in, a, in a not a direct way. I mean, the plans were, because of fragmentation and abstraction, mm -hmm. the plans were started off being fragmented and then became fluid. And then the issue of scale uh, when I was looking at studies for a, a very big harbor project uh, in Cologne, I, my, I, my, our concern was always to do with how to replace the current 
mass or the, the scale of the urbanism into, um, into the site. Mm -hmm. So the simultaneously I began to look at uh, what I call land formation. Mm -hmm. And land formation led to kind of really the fluidity of the work. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the digital work is kind of a uh, 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 an obvious continuation of, of that mm -hmm. process or complexity. Because the way we drew things were no longer the, it was not a, um, a, a straightforward layered situation where it's not like extruded. The plans were never extruded, so each floor mm -hmm. was very different. So through that you kind of uh, began to kind of have very complex uh, a complex complexity and uh, it was in a way a natural process for us to go through the whole digital thing because mm -hmm. you can you can uh, first not only precision but you can uh, you can analyze it better you can look at it better mm -hmm. and uh, so how does uh, famously parametrics fit into this, this sequence uh, you can ask Patrick, no i'm a, asking he's you a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a parametric I, guy i know is it a continuation then or an interview in your view or is it uh, yeah is i think it, it's, it's an obvious continuation yes. i see so it's it, it perfectly in, in in the nature of what you were doing before uh, well, I think, you know, before, if you remember, people used to think I was, uh, like, uh, I would, every project, we did uh, maybe five iterations. Mm -hmm. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't decide. And uh, the other thing, of course, everything was heavily distorted. And I think it was interesting that the drawing technique uh, informed the work. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we were drawing the building, but actually, ultimately, the that technique became the project. Yes. Or looking at the landscape. I mean, if you look at the Hong Kong peak drawings, they were sitting in a particular landscape, but the project became the landscape project. I mean, this is also 20 years ago. Uh, the, the painting of the world, the idea of a kind of uh, an occupied ground mm -hmm. became not just the painting, but the, the project. So, um, yeah, I think that led to the idea of kind of certain nuances or similitude between the, uh, in the objects or whatever. Well, it, it seems too that you, you, you conceive your projects as of in, in a, f a field of forces. And as I understand parametrics, it's also a force field on screen in terms of, the, the, of it's being a dynamic design process. So I mean, I think, you know, like looking at some of the reviews today, <clears throat> well, if you were doing the same project 20 years ago, you would pick up all the lines which are from the adjac adjacencies in terms of context were very important, not because you want to be contextual, mm -hmm. but these kind of force lines were very important to generate a kind of an idea on the side that would never be, uh, there would not be, but now I think it's much more isolated, these, they're much more contained mm -hmm. uh, and kind of inter interventions as opposed to connecting to every line mm -hmm. on earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter, do you have any reactions to the, uh, the progress? Or you've now been a uh, Zaha observer for quite a few, several decades. Uh, what about the, her progress through the field? Do you have any reactions? Oh, well, I, I think Zaha is uh, still some minutes uh, together with us, is leaving this institution. And uh, she was 15 years together here with us, here with the city in Vienna. And uh, I think we, sh we should, uh, I would, I mean, I would prefer to to ask some basic questions to uh, also we were talking about teaching and, and Sarah mentioned the review today so uh, she was here 15 years teaching in, in the city in, in this uh, in the institution in the Angewandte so uh, it would be maybe interested what, what is your uh, idea is not teaching and teaching the, everybody's a professor uh, or, but what what is really your, your message uh, what we your, would you gift in in general to the students what what they should do when they uh, it's not a question of for my understanding for a program if they make uh, going computer or not because the responsibility in the end that the architect has for the outcome but what, what is uh, I would be interesting what is your I mean, uh, I think, you know, I started teaching when I just finished school. When I finished school at the, in London in 77, I, the next semester I started teaching. And um, I, I, I came in touch with the many of my uh, ex-students, and actually the, your car was here, who was graduated from the AA in my unit in 75. 
Yeah. No, 85, yeah. 85, sorry. <laughs> so, so I think that we are also just... But they don't have so many chairs that all students can get a professorship here, no? <laughs> no? <laughs> no? So anyway, they, so I think that it was always, and when I started teaching, it was always through set up. I always thought that, um, you know, I was interested in more and what I call projected reality, that uh, we, if, if it might not happen now, but it will happen in 10 years or 20 years. And, uh, and so the idea, we, could, we have to, uh, through uh, sometimes analysis and, and through study of the site conditions and so on like that, and cities, we can some, more or less, not totally, but predict what will happen and how we can accommodate that, you know? So uh, then at the time, so it, looked, it looked, you know, 30 years more advanced, so to speak. And I thought that was to, to, give, to give the students, an, not an impossible task, but a task that they have to put themselves out, uh, put themselves on their neck on the line, you know, not to just to do uh, very mundane kind of everyday things. And therefore the research was very important, but research is not important only for the sake of research. You have to really have a sort of an idea. If you, for the sake of it, you can might stumble on certain things. Um, so I think that was really, and I think that was important that the students suspended their belief because if they didn't believe, they, they couldn't do it. And that was what, what is, I think was very, very exciting. Also, I have to say, I know Bas is not going to like me saying this, uh, the five-year program of uh, the master class were, was a, a really an incredible tool for students to learn. And I'm not saying they're not good now, but I, that was an, I, I was very skeptical when I came to, the, to, to teach here that you know, have students with you for five, six years because I thought, my God, I mean, you know, at the A, people jumped around from one unit to the other. Uh, but it was, I think it was a very uh, important, uh, uh, for me it was a very rewarding program because the students, the skills they developed in those period of time was really far superior than to any other school. And I think that was very exciting. I mean, you know, I, I don't say that because I'm in Vienna. Some, some of the best people in my office are from the school here. And, uh, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's basically due to that uh, long-term, you know, training. So, you, you know, every year, and also there were two, a few things. We always asked the students to write their own brief, which means I ne we never gave a brief. Uh, we always asked the students to charge their own site. And I think this kind of, um, ability to uh, write the text uh, for these projects was also very, very good training. Uh, Peter, you were, you were saying earlier today that, that Zaha has been here for about 15 years, but you felt that she was really not absorbed by the Viennese culture. Um, and that, no, no, uh, uh, not the culture, but by the uh, Viennese uh, people, but the Viennese official. Uh, uh, I mean, there is a, this is a challenge, it's a chance, no? And, uh, but this, uh, I mean, I wanted to ask her, so I, I don't want to give the answer. I really no? don't know, I yeah. mean, I don't know, I mean, uh, I didn't, I, I don't know anything about uh, no, I do, I mean, I, because I've been coming here uh, all my life, actually, since I was a child. Uh, my uncle, as I told you many times, my uncle lived here. So, if my parents wanted to punish us, they'd bring us to Vienna in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and, and me and my cousins, who wanted to hang around in London when we were teenagers, or I don't know, Beirut or wherever, we did not want to be in Vienna. <laughs> and, and so, when I began to actually come to Austria, because one of the first people who invited me to lecture was in Austria, and I became friends with Wolf, who always invited me to many events before he was teaching at the school. We came, I came in my fourth year to a trip to Vienna, uh, and um, it was an incredible trip, and uh, my kind of views of Vienna changed, but that took a lot, 20 years. And uh, so I been coming to Austria, to Vienna, many times, you know, and uh, so it's like a, I didn't, I don't think about them as the Austrians trying to, mm. not being nice to me, I you know, No, but do, do you think nice that they are, I mean, they're still teaching, uh, there's a lot of students came through, through your class, and there was a, uh, also a very clear position, a position which, uh, could be also healthy for the for for the town here, just to have a, a dialogue uh, beyond uh, beside the beside the school. Do you really think that uh, there was 
uh, a common interest in, in a movement, in a new movement, and it was a new movement uh, of architecture. Or uh, they were satisfied that she's in school and... Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, I mean, I felt more I was like a, in, in an island at the at the Angemata. So I, I don't know what the rest of Austria what so you, you've done three yeah. three projects in Austria, as far as I can count. The the one in uh, Innsbruck, the you know the. Um, no, we did uh, two projects in Innsbruck. Oh, two. Okay, so the ski jump and the oh, yeah, okay, there are separate projects, of course. Um, and then the the housing on the Danube here, or at least on the canal, yeah. and of and the economics uh, building. So that's that's not bad for a small country, uh, but it seems that you've made more of an impact in China, which is a much bigger country. No, uh, excuse me, I, I don't think of uh, speaking projects only, because there's also, it's a city, there's a planning, there's a layout, there is an idea or not an idea of a city, so I'm asking why uh, there is no interest to, to really try to find uh, a vision for, for this very little, very small city, because it's, you can do utopia with Vienna. It's only not even two million inhabitants, no? and there's nobody is coming to Vienna additional. I mean, so I don't know. I can't you can. In, in, the, in the place of the Viennese, do they think of us as just come sort of loonies and at the, at the, at the school of uh, you know, applied arts, or do they relate to what we do? I have no, I have no idea. No. Well, uh, Peter, maybe you, uh, you can answer the question a little bit better. When I, when I said earlier that uh, uh, the architect in our, in our building said that this isn't architecture, it's art, do you think that in the context of the Angavanta uh, and, and in Zaha's concept, it's actually labeled artistic, it's too artsy for the, uh, to be commissioned? It's, has, she's, has she ever actually been uh, asked to uh, participate in any planning issues in the city? And if not, why? No, I haven't. You haven't? No. No, I, 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 I think it's remarkable. It's remar no, remarkable. If you always speak about culture, like a city like this, that there's, and that they're doing, I mean, the pedestrian zone and, and squares and whatever, uh, but uh, there's no discussion. And this is a school. What, what for? You have a school uh, that, uh, that you give advices or give ideas. And then you have certain people, it's not only Saha, they are, all, they are sitting here and others. So I, I feel, I mean, that they make a, a central station. This is not even a Haltestelle. Uh, and uh, the school, I don't know, they, they put the, the head in the pillow. Uh, so there's no, uh, no interest. Or, or what. And, and, and this, I, I think, is remarkable because there won't be a change, there won't be a development if uh, the school is just isolated. And no, I mean, uh, this is uh, my, my feeling. The authorities were not, they have not been involved with what which we do in the school. I mean, but I, I really don't know. Hmm. I mean, I've, I've, I've noticed, I've noticed I've that, that, that the cultures that didn't go through Renaissance and that didn't go through the Enlightenment are different than those country, countries that did. And um, the interesting thing. I mean, thi mind you, in New York, they're not involved. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, That's true, but which official in New York City has asked these guys to, to contribute to their ideas about New York or the skyline or whatever. Yeah, but that's a, 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 they have a different uh, yeah, structure. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah, but they're, they're wow. private uh, developer in, investors. It doesn't matter, private developers no. are the same here. But, you know, th th there are decisions made on New York City about infrastructure and, yeah, and, sure, and sure. parks and all sorts of things like that. Yeah, but they, they ask you in Singapore and they ask you in uh, Bilbao to do uh, urban plans. Yeah, because they have a large size. Yeah, they're... No, but I mean, what's your point? Well, the, the point is that, that uh, it seems that you've occupied a bubble, not of your own creation, but uh, that the, the, the city seems to have left you alone. I'm not aware of any... Oh, in this city? Yeah. Uh, but it's also true of London. No, in fact. it's not left alone, but I, I think the interest, this, there's some, uh, there's a... No, London uh, has definitely left me alone. Yeah. You know. Or maybe it's a great advantage right. that I can do what I like. Uh, you know, but, you know, I think they... The, the thing is, I think in the same way that uh, I can only say that about uh, the UK, not about uh, Europe or America. While in Europe, you know, you have a connection between education and the profession. So mm -hmm. many professors are practicing architects. So there's not a, dis there's not a disconnect. While in, in the UK, I can't imagine one practicing established architect teaching. 
mm-hmm. not one. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, if people think I'm part of the establishment, I don't teach in London, I teach in here or in Yale or somewhere else. So there is no connection. So there is no connection also between ad- ideas and commerce, in a sense. Mm-hmm. In, in, the, in the UK, there is no, these ideas don't filter through. They might filter through eventually, they, because they do have a kind of utopian uh, projects, but it would take them 30, 40 years, whether how to do an airport or whatever it may be. But I suppose in New York have the similar problem, you know? Um, I, I was about to say that the, the um, or I did say that there's some cultures that lived through the Renaissance and some through the Enlightenment and those that didn't uh, emerge with different cultures. Um, it, 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 uh, I'm not an uh, art historian, but it seems to me that um, uh, Vienna, although it went through a period of um, uh, abstract music with Schoenberg and probably others, um, it never had a, a Cubist movement or a, um, uh, it continued in the figurative tradition. So there's no Cubism, no Futurism, no Supremacism, no Deconstructivism. Um, and, and that um, s- a part of the fact that you were allowed to teach in a bubble may be that, that um, there's nothing in the DNA of Viennese cultural history that's uh, uh, about abstraction. Mm, I, I don't think that's the. Um, mm. I don't think it, mm. that follows. It's, okay. Because? I mean, it's possible. I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. You can say that almost of all European cities. Well, uh, I don't know. Paris where, went through Where do they Cubism. have abstraction in France? Well, the... Uh, I mean, the, the, if you the can't work. call what they build there is abstraction. Well, the work of Claude Barham, for example, that was mm-hmm. very... The cl- work of Claude Barham was very oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I know, but of course, Corbeau and all these people, but... Yeah. But I don't... I mean, I don't think currently they're engaged in abstraction. I don't think yeah. that's the reason. I uh-huh. think there is... I think these, some of these cities are very conservative. Yeah. And, and their values are quite conservative. And I think there is a, a weight of uh, the past, which, uh, which is a very heavy weight on any new development. Mm-hmm. I mean, like if you see, there's a lot of work in London. I've never seen so much work going on in London ever. I've been lived there for 40 years. The 80s was a great uh, you know, moment building. There was terrible stuff, but nothing like it is now. There are major sites, enormous sites in central London are being redone. And there is a kind of a generic a style emerging, but it's not abstract. It's kind of between simplicity and uh, kind of, it's not vernacular anymore. It's come out of the Berlin tradition. The, the yeah, it is very, very, very Berlinesque. Uh, and, you know, it's like, I call it Stone Age because it's like the stone buildings with small windows. And somehow uh, the, the kind of uh, ecologist sustainability and uh, conservatism kind of emerge together and they come up with this generic project. They're not necessarily bad. Mm-hmm. They're just uh, everywhere. Does that constitute sort of an oppositional force to, uh, against what you're doing? I think they don't think that you know if you do cultural buildings, you can do commercial buildings. Because, you know, life is so dissected and like, if you do, if you do culture, you do culture alone. If you do commerce, you know, like you, you can't, you know, you don't do housing. But, I mean, they're wrong, of course. Mm-hmm. They could be done. Are you doing commercial buildings in China? You are, actually. Well, a, a Galaxy One Jing and the one in uh, Sky Soho is all. Yeah, how, how have they done? Have yeah. they sold well? How, how, how have they done? I think they've done well. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't ask. Um, in terms of. Uh, you know, they don't give us a. Uh, you know, we, we're not paid by the square meter we sell. Mm-hmm. I'm noticing in the United States, I'm about to do an article on, on red architecture versus blue architecture, um, you know, the conservatives versus the progressives. And um, it seems that there's, um, uh, that the, the Democrats, the blues are on the defensive and from an architectural point of view as well as from a cultural point of view. Uh, do, do you think that the box is um, gaining traction? Well, we've never lost traction. Well, I, th- I think you made a big dent. You started opening up the box. Yeah, I don't think there's a dent. Peter? No. Um, 
very hard to answer your questions. Uh, I, I mean... Uh, a general statement. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I just wonder, uh, I mean, there, there was a school architecture department was built up, which uh, became a global player. No? And it was very remarkable in, in also to other universities. And uh, because, I mean, what do you think was the reason? Where? When you start, when you started like ten years ago, the angewandte, the architecture becomes have a, had a heavy weight uh, in in architecture, and, and really many many uh, they were invited a lot of, of people from all over the world, and and uh, there was a uh, I think it 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 was in a very good shape, and it was a global success, and. How do you how do you but see actually, that? I think, and I think globally, not many people knew about it. No, in in, in the sense that uh, it was uh, the people were interested. What's uh, happening here? No, no, I know because I think you know only through the reviewers who come, and and you know uh, I think I think the work was very good. Yeah, but do you think that this is is going on or? Uh, uh, what I is your I what mean, like? I, what? On my view, that's, I mean, my, and maybe there was DRL in London. Uh, where Patrick and Theo teach, uh, I think I still, I think still good. Yeah. Um, I think I personally think I don't know what's going on in California uh, because I, I, I have no idea. SIAC or, or what? Well, SIAC, USC, UCLA. Um, I'm not sure if that's, you know, what's going happening. I mean, I know from the East Coast schools, I think it's a, it's a strange time. I mean, Yale, there are some good stuff going on once in a while. I mean, I had a very good studio at Yale three years ago, two years ago. Uh, but uh, I don't know what's going on with Columbia or whatever. I think, I mean, I can talk about also the Bartlett and the AA. They are all, uh, there is this kind of um, nostalgia for the 70s. In my view, it was a great moment, you know. And it was very exciting, but I, I, my view is that whatever need, we needed to learn from that experimentation has been learned. So why do we have to go back? Why don't we just do something new and try something else out? But I think that the people who are pushing for it, mm. it was their glorious moment, and so they want to go back. And so they, A, it's full of kind of arty projects. And uh, and in the Bartlett, I haven't seen what they're doing, but I think it's the same. So it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, I think what they don't realize about the 70s, you know, I came to the AA in 1972, 73, and, you know, I had a very strange idea about what should be architecture. The minute I walked in there, they told me that was a completely wrong idea. Architecture is not that at all. You know, forget it. Wipe it out of my mind. And the idea, the, there were two current things, which the art project or performance art, somebody's buzzer, uh, you know, or performance art. And so we spent uh, six months doing all sorts of things which were not, were not another thing. We're just like, you know, urban farming, you know, go to Wales and take some cows with you, uh, it's true. So, uh, you know, go to a bus and put inflatable, another life. But what was emerging was that, that it was alternative life. You know, there was an alternative life with that. And then it slowly became more theoretical that you had to look for these kind of other alternatives uh, through drawing techniques or through discourse or debate or writing or whatever it was, was to define some other source of inspiration or in terms of life. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure why they are going back to that. <laughs> How do you see the future of, of the architecture department of, of the Angewandte? Is this, no, uh, but you, you're always in the future. I mean, you, you always are not so interested what happens at the moment. Well, I mean, uh, I, I personally uh, think it's a very good school. It attracts a lot of good students. They just have to have good people. Yeah, and they are protected, the students, in the future. I don't know. I think it's, you know, the students, you know, it's not, they're not like some sheep. 
you are herding around. But you leave the cows here, no? Because the <laughs> no, I mean, I think, no, I mean, I think there are lots of good things coming now. Yeah. I think what is what has changed at the Angevante, when I started, majority of the students were either Austrian or German. And now you have in our studio, I don't know how many, 30 nationalities or 20 nationalities. So I think it's become much more international as a school. And that is a big change. And they're all coming to Vienna who normally speaks English, but all the kids now speak English. You know, when I started, when I first went to do my interview, they told me to take this job, I must learn German. <laughs> and Wolf Briggs was gonna give me German lessons. <laughs> yeah. And that so. was changed. I was, I mean, I don't think they've asked Hani to learn German. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe he knows better German than, than you. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you yeah. know something I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you, you never know. Well, Peter, uh, you, were, you were very successful at extroverting the, the Mac. And it's not at all um, a, a given that a uh, Museum of, of um, Applied Arts is going to be extroverted, but you did it through your programs, the art that you showed, the, the art people you brought in, the, uh, your external reach to California, to the, the bunker. If you were to um, work within the uh, Angavata uh, school, how would you extrovert it? Because uh, somebody said earlier today that it exists sort of in a bubble and it's, it's, it's not terribly engaged by the city or, or it doesn't engage the city. How would you extrovert the school? How would you engage Vienna? No, I mean, this is not the, there's the director of the school is here, and he, uh. he easily can answer the question. But uh, I, I just, uh, this was the point. This, if you have somebody, and I, I say it again, somebody like Sarah Hadid, and she, she, she has a, it's not a stylish architecture she's doing, there's a program, there's a programmatic program, and uh, there's a lot of criticized and critic, no? because even the people that were in, in the newspaper, they said, now Briggs left, Saha is leaving, now we can start again to make architecture. This was, it's in the newspaper. And so, but the school, I don't hear anything that they say where we are, are we are, is, is this, this a, uh, a society from Babas or where, where we live. So what I mean that uh, this the, this challenge, there could be a challenge, and not only Saha, Saha as a symbol. Uh, so where where is the the icon? Where are the icons of Saha in in, in, in well, the? That's true of you too. You is a triumvirate. You have no, no longer have that position. You retired. <laughs> Uh, Zaha is is, is a, no. I'm I'm not retired, but I'm retired from the from the museum. Yeah, that's right. I also, <laughs> I, I, I'm also and, and tired. You're, and you're, I'm also, and, yeah, and you're yeah, not yeah, retiring yeah, either. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't put me down in this way. No, <laughs> no, no. you're not retiring either. No, no not so, so much. Not so much. Right, right. Yeah. At, at any rate, but so the ranks seem to be thinning to a certain extent. So the, the wolf and Zaha are gone, and you're you're in a different position. So the, the, is there still a critical mass? Because the three of you were you. Were, you but the, we haven't. Oh, we are still around. I mean, we're yeah, not no. dead. Yeah. No, 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 I know. <laughs> But yeah. it, it depends. If we talk an hour more, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I have to go to suicide, not you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're no longer local. Well, it's you're up to Gerald Bass <laughs> to make a visiting cri mm -hmm. critic professorship so he can invite all these people who are okay. leaving. No, no. Okay. It's no, but, but this is still, I, I think it's, it's the, the culture of, of a city. And this was interesting just how uh, I have a, I have a about and, uh, a meaning, but how, uh, of course, uh, she does, uh, Saha, you don't live here and, and you, you come here and, and making your, your school, but uh, still there's a, a lot of things happened in these 15 years in, in, in this city. And I was just asking how you, how you feel about that. Uh, uh, do you feel comfortable or you don't, don't care? No, I do care, but I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what else he can do. I mean. Because there is, I mean, there's a, there are a generation of, of students and there are, I mean, there are architects now, not, not only here, but uh, everywhere. So, uh, and it's also, do you have, uh, do you have a wish or an, an, an intention what the, the school, sh how the sh school should develop after you, you're leaving the school? Or? Yeah. <laughs> You're in, a, you're in a curious position, Zaha, because, because uh, uh, you may think of yourself simply as an architect, but... but huh? How about your wishes about the Mac? 
I don't have any wishes about the Mac. Uh, I mean, may, maybe you, not me. No, no. But uh, as I was saying, Zah, you're in a fairly interesting position because you're, you, you think of yourself as an architect simply doing buildings, but you've actually become a major cultural figure. <laughs> And so the, there's a certain amount of weight that's, um, uh, that you, is, is imposed on you in terms of, of uh, making broad cultural general, generalizations. I, I mean, I think that, um, you know, it's very important for the school, and I think important for many schools to commit themselves to experimentation. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when I started 15 years ago, I had no idea myself. What we, we always have a, some sort of a clue where we wanted to go. But the great thing about teaching, you don't really know, because the dynamic with the students, the dynamic with what's going on at the time, uh, whatever things are going on, you cannot predict exactly what is the outcome unless you mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, invest in it. You wouldn't know. Uh, and so if you have a very small ambition, yeah, they will do well. It will, they, will all, they are competent, mm -hmm. but it's the, they don't cross the mark. Mm -hmm. They don't make the leap. And I think that this kind of schools, it has very, it can attract very good students. It can attract good teachers and I think they should not uh, be, uh, you know, shy mm -hmm. as to what they do. I wrote an essay for the uh, for the, uh, the the book that's been published on your 15 years, and I went through all the material I, I could find, and I was really astounded not only at the um, quality of the architecture, but the, the, the quality of the pedagogy, basically, that you were able to uh, teach people how to learn, how to, how to investigate a building, how to s sort of determine a program. It was, it was just as, um, I, I completely agree with you, the five-year program was, was quite amazing. Yeah. And I have to say, I mean, I think that the people who worked with me, whether it's Patrick or Hannes or all the other assistants, which there are many whom I can't all name, uh, I mean, I know who they are, have done a great job because we have a, we're not here all the time. Mm -hmm. So the success of the studio is not up because I'm, I was here. I think I have to say, I must say, thank Patrick for his enormous contribution to this program. Mm -hmm. And but I think Hannes and all these people who looked after these kids on a daily basis did a fantastic job, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it's not very easy, to, you know. Of course. Okay, I think our time is up. Did you have any? Well, other I had enjoyed it a lot. I mean, I think it's a, it was a very uh, enjoyable experience for me. And um, I see. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I think our time is up. And um, I thank you all for for coming, and thank you both for for being here and being very responsive. Thank you.